Hello, everybody. Welcome to the AEW Weekly Wrap Up. I'm your host, Ethan Black. Today, we're going to talk about these shows from during the week. It's April 15th, for, or May 15th for the 19th. Sorry, not April. <laughs> for some reason, I got that stuck in my head. Uh, but before we get into that, we're just going to start with the some news here. AEW's getting a new show on Saturday nights. It's going to be Collision. That'll be starting Saturday, June 17th from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern, or my time. East Coast on Canada, that'd be 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. You kind of figure it was coming since they got rid of dark and dark elevation, but I mean, I'm, it's pretty exciting news. I'm be covering that on this show, so we'll just wait for that for June. But congratulations to them. But let's just get started here. So we'll start with the Rampage show from last week. So we had, excuse me. Billy Gunn and the acclaimed Anthony Bowens back. Caster defeating Kip Seaman to put it in the blade 8 minutes and 8 seconds. Tony Storm defeating Allison K 4 minutes and 58 seconds. Carl Fletcher defeating Action and Drag 8 minutes and 18 seconds. And then we tag to match with the Mogul Embassy. Brian Cage for Strickland defeating Dark Horse, Albatross, and John Silver 10 minutes and 49 seconds. And yes, I know they had some house shows, but I'm not going to talk about them on this show. So we'll go to the Dynamite. So we kick it off with TNT Jam Warlow. Talk about Christian Cage making a lot of promises. Last week, then he really wants him to follow through before Wallow tells Christian to come in and tell him Jack spin his face. Christian hits along with Lucha Source. Christian and Wallow get each other's face as Wallow dares Christian to spin his face. Before he, he does, Wallow stops him. Lucha Source goes to attack Wallow, but he stops to take Christian down as well. Wallow goes to power on Christian, but Lucha Source stops him as Christian hits Wallow with a low blow. Lucha Source hits Christian at a ladder. Takes it to Warlow. Lucha Source then chokes his war on the ladder and a brace. And then Christian follows with the kills his war on the broken ladder and holds up the TNT title. I thought this segment was actually pretty fun. I actually enjoyed the opening segment. Then we kick it off with a tag team match, a rematch from one of the mm-hmm. host rule shows. International champ Orange Cassidy teams with Darby Allen. Goes against Lee Moriarty and Big Bill. So Orange Cassidy and Lee Moriarty start the match off before Big Bill and Darby Allen come in with Big Bill swing Darby around. Bill Moriarty go- gets sent to the outside where Allen and Cassidy hit them with stereo Tolpe Suicidas as we go to pitcher and pitcher break. When we come back from pitcher and pitcher, Big Bill has Cassie in a suplex. It's Darby tags, but the referee doesn't see him, so he can't let him in. But Orange was able to fight off both Bill and Lee Moriarty before tagging in Darby. Who hit the coffin drop both of them before tagging him, repeating the corners. But Big Bill comes back with a boss man slam for a two count. Cassie tags in its DT on Bill with Moriarty tags for Bill on for putting him in the cross face. Allen Cassie did a double superplex to Moriarty. More already, but Bill runs and takes both of them with a double clothesline. Orange tries for a stun dog millionaire, but Bill holds on as Allen takes him out with a code red. Cassie takes up Bill with an orange punch. Darby hits Lee with the coffin drop. Except for Pam Ritter, he does the headlock takedown, taking a page of the his full gear 2021 match at MGF to get the victory at 11 minutes and 13 seconds. Fun little opening match. I got this one six out of 10. Do we head to the parking lot where the Young Bucks are coming in and Alex Mara stops him? As for an update on Kenny Omega, he says he's doing, they said that he's doing fine, but the Blackpool Comedy Club shows up from behind. The Young Bucks starts to attack him, but they are a number as Cloudy Castle and Slayer Snake Jackson under a truck before it works on the intro armor Mac Jackson. Mark, John Moss looks in the camera and says they're the only elite in this business. Do we go to the, somewhere else backstage in the trainer's area? Randy Paquette is with TNT Champ Warlow, who says he is fine. Our Anderson walks in and tosses the ice bag, says he would. He should have been out there. Warlow asks that's why he has Anderson stay in the back. Orange is what he said he could do, but asks Warlow what he's prepared to do. He says he'll beat him in his own game, and it challenges him to a ladder match for the title at double or nothing. Then somewhere else backstage, where an apricot is with international champ Orange Cassie, asks what Kyle Fletcher wants shot at his title. Cassie says there's a lot of people who want title shots, but anyone who wants one should go to Tony Khan and he'll fight them all. Then we go to our second match of the show. Sammy Guevara goes what Exiles Prime. He, Guevara hits a knee strike in the GTH for the quick win at 29 seconds. Honestly, I can't really give it a rating. It's kind of, it was like a 30 second match. But Guevara gets him on the into his double or nothing match at, for the title. Then after the match, he gets on the microphones. It's every time he is there, he remembers the old days, remembers struggles, good times, bad times, and drama. But all that brought him here and made him who he is today. He knows he's not perfect and made a lot of mistakes, and everyone has been has seen his mistakes firsthand. Sometimes it takes a few wrong turns to get in the right place. And the right place is May 28th at Double or Nothing. Guevara listens to his heart and his heart says at Double or Nothing. He'll be the new AEW World Champion. And in 2012, he gets in the ring of Jeff Jarrett, Jay Lethal, Adam Singh, Sunday Duck. Duck carries two guitars with Dax, Harwood, and Cash Wheeler's names on them. For Lethal, because the FTR runs it and knocks Singh off the stage through tables. Then they start probably with Lethal and Jared around the ring using belts and chairs as Harwood rips off Lethal's clothes. 
FDR takes Jer inside, trying to go for the shower scene, but we see a woman. Turns out it was Jeff Jared's wife, Karen, shows up and low blows cash wheel before Jeff Jared takes the FDR. Sometimes Zing reappears and chokes his F hits a double choke him to FDR. And then Jared and Lethal take the cars and smash them over FTR's heads, laying them out and possibly holding up the tag tiles to close the next statement. I imagine this is probably gonna have a stipulation, probably like a street fight or something at double or nothing. But we'll wait and see. Then we go backstage. Renee Paquette is with Darby Allen, and that's the hell update with a message to the world champion MJF. Darby says this match means a lot to him. Sammy, Sammy Guevara says he respects Darby and won't lay down for MJF a double or nothing. He says while him has to take the world title off the prick MJF, and then Darby says me the best man win, and then they fist bump. Then we go to our third match, a tag team match. This original was supposed to be a trios match, but Jimmy here had to be taken off due to injury. So it was Tony Storm, Ruby Silver, the Elkhead, because Britt Breaker and Nakura Kurushita. Masters with both teams brawling, then Cheetah sends Soho to the corner with 10 punches. Tony Storm takes him, but gets kicked in a hit by Sheeta, who takes with the Britt Baker. Baker hits a swinging nightbreaker on Storm for a two count as she runs for Soraya trips her. This distraction caused Storm to go after Britt Baker with a hip attack as the referee still distracts this Soraya attacks Breaker on the floor. Outcast keeps Britt in their corner as we go to pitcher and pitcher. We would come back from pitcher and pitcher. Sheeta takes everyone out, including Soraya, and then dives on the Outcast on the floor. Hits Soho with a jumping knee for a two count. Sheeta comes out with a Falcon Arrow for another two count. We'll find out Tony Storm. Britt tags, tags in and hits a butterfly slide. Soho hits, Sheeta hits a Meteora. Storm's able to break out the pin as Breaker hits us. Hits Soho with a DDT, but quickly transcends into the lockjaw, which Soho carries a rope for a two count. Then she falls out with the no future kick and then takes the Storm and takes Sheeta off the apron. Breaker hits the A Ray crash. Then the stomp on Storm Sorry gets an abstract referee again. Sorry passes spray paint. Kansas Tony Storm and she sprays Breaker in the eyes and it hits the Storm Zero for the victory at 9 minutes and 15 seconds. Not a bad match. I get this one 6 out of 10. I, I do like all five women in this match, but honestly, the interference got to stop. Wait, it's just getting way too much. Took me out of the match a little bit, but it was still a fun little tag match. Then we go backstage. Renee Bet is with Orange Cash for the second time. And then she told him that 20 men went and talked to Tony Khan. We get a title shot. So Cass said he'll take them out in a 21 man blackjack battle royal double or nothing. And then she had, he asked Renee if she wanted, she wanted to be in it, but she says no. Then we go to Tony Khan, who says today it's one of the greatest days in W history and repeats that collection will appear on June 17th on TNT and that's his first six shows. Except the premiere, well, he'll say he'll announce the location next week. So June 24th, they'll be in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. June 29th, they'll be in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. July 8th, they'll be at the Regina, Regina, Regina Saskatchewan, Canada. July 15th, they'll be at Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And then July 27th, they'll be in Newark, New Jersey. I believe July 15th is the final to the Owen Hart, where the Owen Hart Cup finals are happening. Don't call me out. I forgot what he said about that, but that's good news. And then we go to our fourth match of the show. I'll be honest, I'm surprised this wasn't the main event of uh, Dynamite. It's false count anywhere. Roger Strong goes well with Chris Jericho. Roger Strong attacks Chris Jericho for the bell rings and goes after him by hitting a back bear for a two count. Jericho comes back, close eyes strong over the top rope. They find the apron. Strong hits a backbreaker on the floor for a two count. Backs out of the ring. Strong blocks a co breaker, tries for a back bear, but Jericho stops him and puts locks in the walls of Jericho. Then he reaches for the ropes as we go to pitcher and pitcher. We go to uh Come after Pedro Pedro, fight upstairs for the crowd and hits towards the back with the fans surround him. Jericho puts Strong for the table as we found out. Excalibur announced that superstar Billy Graham has unfortunately passed away. And I forgot to say this is the news, but my condolences go to uh, Billy Graham's family and friends. Unfortunately, passed. We found out during Dynamite. And then we strong back by Josh Jericho under the food counter as security to hold fans back from getting involved. Jericho picks up a rope stand, attacks Strong with it before they head to the Sterica door and fight on the ledge. They hit back towards and Jericho. Strong throws plastic knives at Jericho and then throws him face first in some soft surf ice cream. And then Jericho throws a trash can at Strong. They head to the outside where Adam Cole's behind Jericho because Cole and JS were barred from the build, were banned from the building, but they're outside. So technically, he's not breaking the, the rule. Cole's behind Jericho and he's allowed to attack him. And then he left the building, hits the boom, and then jumping knee from, the, from Strong to get the victory at 13 minutes and 12 seconds. This was actually a fun little false cat error match. I just won 7 out of 10. I wish they would take advantage more of their false count anywhere matches because a fun time they just fight back and then come back. But at least in AEW, at least it's different. But this this was a fun false count anywhere match. 
teasing more of the Jericho co-match at Double or Nothing, which it hasn't been officially announced yet, but I'll tell with that later. Then we go to do our fifth match, Jungle Boy Jack Perry goes over Roosh. Roosh takes Perry to the outside, search from all around into the barricades. Roosh continues as host of these as pass from cable ropes. He then he chokes at his opponents. So he tosses him in the barricades, and it says Perry into the crowd as we go to a pitcher and pitcher break. We come back. Jungle Boy tries to come back with Roosh with a jumping knee before Perry comes back with a draw kick. They start finding the top rope and start training chops before Jungle Boy hits a hurt wrong. Host of these says stops Perry by grabbing his boot. Perry able to duck Roosh and locks in the snare trap. Roosh makes it to the rope for a rope break. Then he licks the blood off Jungle Boy. I really wish he stopped doing that. <laughs> but that makes him mad. They start training chops for Roosh. Tosses Perry off the able to side suplex. That looked like a nasty... Oh, I actually thought he like, got injured there, but thank God he rolled one more time. And then Roosh covers Perry with one full body kicked out. Roosh kisses the tag. Jungle Boy in the corner pushes the referee off as Roosh goes after the referee. Jungle Boy rolls him by grabbing holding the tights for the victory at 10 minutes. I get this one 10, 6 out of 10. So I'm going to say 6 out of 10, not 10 out of 10. After the match, LFI, Roosh press fits Jose Sister, start choking Jungle Boy with the cable. Then we hear Darby Allen's music. He runs somebody gets out number of tights as well. Then we see Sammy Guevara, the third pillar, runs out and him and Darby take out LFI. And then Guevara, Allen, and Perry all stare each other down to close that statement. Then we go backstage. Renee Paquette is with world champion M- MJF. That's how he's feeling about the match at double or nothing. And then he literally just smacks the microphone out of her hand and walks away. And it and she picks the microphone and immediately goes backstage to Tony Storm. Breaks the war method with four wins in five days. Tony says, Storm says she doesn't see Women's Stream JB here do that and isn't the same Tony Storm as before. And she has any guess she'll put the title on against her double or nothing. Then we go to our main event match of the show. Ricky Storms goes on Jay White. I, I'm actually a little surprised this is on Dynamite. I actually thought this they were saying this for double or nothing, but I'll talk about more in this review. Jay White escapes to the outside. Ricky Stars takes control back. It's up for these built back to the outside. Where Stars and tells White against the barricade. Back inside the ring, White was able to start Starks by drum neck first on top rope. Ricky takes Jay out with a back body drop, but Starks falls White to the outside where White rams him into the apron a few times. Trish Robinson gets in the face of Starks, which gives White the chance to take control as to go to pitcher and pitcher. We come back from the break. Starks control by him during the OTT for a two count. White comes back with DT of his home. Then goes out to the uh, ribs of Starks. Starks leave a block. Blake run a revival, but White sends Starks over the top to the outside. White sends Starks back inside. Starks puts on a cradle for a two count. They go back and forth for a bit till White escapes Rambo show. Rambo show. There we go. Starks tries to spear, but Juice trips him up. Juice gets involved with the chair, but Starks takes the chair from him and hits White with it for a rare DQ. And so Jay White gets the win by disqualification at 12 minutes and 18 seconds. I actually really like this match as well. I give it a 7 out of 10. I didn't like the ending so much, but it was still a good match. And I imagine they're probably going to run this back at double or nothing. In our main event segment, Tony Schiavone introduces Don Callis, who comes to the ring and gets booed by the fans of Austin. Callis comes up to fix them and he's everything for Omega. Brings up all the times that Callis helped them with and says without them, there's no Kenny Omega. Speaking of, we hear his theme song. He comes out towards the ring and just sees Secure Dry Stun, but Omega takes them all out. Then we see the Blackpool Combat Club appears, attacks from behind, including Moxley hitting him with a paramount shift. Moxley gets on the microphone and says this is Omega's final warrant and tells him to stay down and calls up the Elite. Young Bucks comes with a trash kit full of weapons. Him and Paige makes his way down to even up to a big ovation. Omega gives Paige the Barbara Broom. They hit the ring and start attacking Blackpool Combat Club. They Bring Wheeler inside the ring and knock him out with the BTE trigger. And then Paige hits him with the buckshot lariat. Heyman says they're the heart, soul, and spirit of this place. And said the elite, they are the elite. And says a double or nothing. It would be elite for his Black Bull Comic Cup at Anarchy in the Arena. What a great segment to close out this week's Dynamite. A rare, actually, one they don't, a rare talking segment to close out Dynamite. Well, should they never do that? But overall, this actually Dynamite was a good episode. I give it a six out of 10 overall score. Easily, ma- the two matches I recommend checking out are the False Cat Anywhere match and J White for Ricky Starks. If I had to pick a third, I'd probably say the Perry Rouge match. So, uh, Rampage that's tonight, it is on 6 30 p.m. Eastern or 7 30 my time. So, in trios, these are spoilers. So, if you don't want to hear them, just fast forward like five, ten seconds. So, trios of Farsi at the Tony's Joshua Dari Davari versus the acclaimed Anthony Boss Mascaster team with Billy Gunn. Jay Cargo has a like, to open challenge for the TBS. Tell the first one is Danny B, and then she meets Genocide. And then transaction, Black Bull Comic Club, John Moxley, Claude Castle, and Ray Leo goes to his best friends, Trent Brad, Chuck Taylor, Timo Bandito. 
In a Dynamite so far, the only matches made for that was for the Ring of World Tag Team Toss, Lucha Bros, Pentagon Jr., and Ray Phoenix. Defense against Black Blue Comic Club, Ring of World Champ, Claude Castano, and Wheeler Yuta. Claude, Claudio beat Ray Phoenix last week on in that double Jeopardy match, so that's why he gets a shot at the Tag Team titles. And a double or nothing card, there's another spoiler in here. If you don't want to hear, just fast forward like five seconds. MJF defends the world title in the fail forward match against Simi Guevara, Darby Allen, Jack Go, Jungle Boy, Jack Perry. FTR defends the World Tag Team Toss against Jay Lethal and Jeff Jarrett. Warlow defends the TT Toss against Christian Cage in a ladder match. Orange Cassidy defends his international Toss against 20 other men in a 21-man Blackjack Battle Royal. Jimmy Hare defends the Women's Toss against Tony Storm. Blackpool Combat Club, Brian Diaz with John Moxley, Cloud Castle with Yuta. First the Elite, Kenny Omega, the Young Bucks, and Heyman Page in NRK in, in the Arena. And Jay Cargo defends the TBS Toss against Tyler Falkyrie. Somebody said, uh, sport, they said that for Ethan Page and the Guns versus the Hardys, I said, was made for this, but I'm just gonna watch Rampage and see. But that is all the AEW stuff. And now we will go to the Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor stuff. So they were back at Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida. So we had 11 matches again for episode 12. So we kick it off with we go backstage with Dodge. So she's with the Max, Wheelie, and Ninja. They show respect to each other and made decisions to team together. And then we go to our opening match, Ring of Honor World Touch and Ray Phoenix goes with Greg A. Loco. Match has with Phoenix and Loco if one each other's offense for Phoenix scores the match with several kicks. Phoenix sends Loco to the floor and arm drag, fall out over springboard dive. Phoenix falls up with a frog splash in the ring for a near fall. Loco caught Phoenix on a rolling move and picks up the gorilla press for slaying him down. After Lo Grand Gate goes for Ray Phoenix's mask, he comes out with a face press for two. Phoenix fought Loco off with a pair of thrust kicks for hitting spinning back kick in the corner. Phoenix falls up with a running on top rope to kick Loco in the hip before landing another splash for a two count. Grand Gate. Grand Gate Loco cuts up Phoenix, but Phoenix hits a rewind kick for the ropes. Uh, Phoenix press Loco into the corner, goes for a rolling cutter, but he caught Phoenix with a cutter of his own for a two count. Phoenix counters with a rolling Frankensteiner for a two count for drilling Loco with a super kick. He brings it back in the ring to the top row, hits a double jump Rana for a two count. Phoenix brought Loco back to the top row for Loco, knocks out with a step up, twist in the short for a two count. I actually thought that was going to be the end of the match. And then Loco brought Phoenix up on the short, but Phoenix pulls him down with a poison Rana. And then a rolling cutter for the victory at 8 minutes and 56 seconds. Excellent match to kick off this week's Ring War TV. I give this one 8 out of 10. It went backstage to It's with the Wingman's Pier, Avon Ryan Nemeth, and they mock Iron Savages. And one of the Ring War is Wingman Country. And then Ian Rekabon announced that Katsushiri Shabai will defend the Pier title against his former project, Alex Coughlin, on June 1st from Las Vegas. Then we go to our second match. Will Knight goes with Matty Rakowski. Nine Gill lands a sent home for Risk Gun. Renkowski hits a boot of Nine Gill, Virtual on the ropes. Brother but Will on the apron comes up with the apron skirt itself for lands with strikes. Back side of Will is fire hits a splash in the corner for him, the spine buster. Maddie fights out the bay with the power bomb by force and nine gill into the corner. Will cut Renkowski in a power bomb position, but Maddie took her down with it by the head for a two count. Nine Gill moves out of the way, hits the boot, pounds, and then the babe with the power bomb or the doctor bomb for the win at three minutes and 43 seconds. For a short, almost four minute match, it was actually a little fun, entertaining match. I just won five out of ten. Then our third match, tag team match, Iron Savages, Bronson, and Boulder. Goes one with the wingman, goes against the wingman's Pierre Avant and Ryan Nemeth. Ryan Nemeth gets attacked by Iron Savages, then Nemeth desperately takes out to Avalon. He got the advantage after uh, Nemeth chop blocks Bronson. And then Nemeth does his uh, swivel of the hips before he got hit with the spine blast from Bronson. Boulder takes and runs well on the wing for hitting a double flapjack. Boulder goes for a moonsault, but Evelyn moves out of the way, hits a splash of his own for a two count. Boulder repeatedly presses Evelyn to kick out for drawing the weight with a cross body. Bronson takes it, and then Boulder draws Bronson under the wingman with that little chair splash for the win at five minutes and 16 seconds. Not a bad match. It was one six out of ten. And in our fourth match of the show, we got more tag team action this time. It is Chris Rodinos and Matt Seidel going against Cole, Cole Carter and Zach Clean. Dinos and Seidel hits some double team moves on Cole Carter. Then Zach Clean takes, but Matt's the same fate as they took a double. He took a double team combo move for a two count. Carter cuts off Seidel off the ropes. That allows Clayton Adler on Seidel. Carter and Clayton work over Seidel with Carter sending him off the top rope into a parasol from uh, Zach. And then Cole hits a splash off the Top row goes for a pin, but Daniels broke it up. Daniels takes it and runs well by hitting a bulldog clothesline combo, but Cole cuts him off, cuts off an Angel Wings attempt that brings Sido to send Carter out to the ring. Daniels hits the STO as Sido lands a dive on Carter on the floor, and then Daniels hits 
claim with the best moonsault ever for the win at 6 minutes and 26 seconds. Not a bad tag team match. I guess one 5 out of 10. Then our next match, Lady Frost, because one with Miranda Ali's. Ali's drills Lady Frost with a run for Booter in the gut. Miranda hits a strong face wash boot in the corner, but only got a one count. She starts talking trash, but Frost hits a jumping knee. Cartwheel cannonball in the corner for a two count. Miranda comes back with a really suplex for a two count round. Then it gets another two count off a Tiger driver. Miranda sets up for a neck break, but Frost fights out with Cartwheel and a Ray crash. Comes to hits a crush screw moonsault for the win at three minutes and 18 seconds. I just want a little solid three minute match. I just won six out of 10. And then we go to more tag team matching. So this is match number six. We have Spanish Announce Project, Sim Pentagon, and Helico because Shinobi Shadow Squad. That's Cheeseburg and Eel Isom. So Cheeseburg and Sim Pentagon start this matchup. Cheeseburg is the better Sim Pentagon with some technical maneuvers. Then Ann Helico broke it up. Cheeseburg is and before taking a shot of his submission moves, Spanish now is probably to work over Cheeseburg until he takes out the Eli, and he runs well by him and dives to Sam Pentagon on the outside. Luther boots him on the floor where the referee was focused in the ring, and Helgo gets Cheeseburg in the Navarro special for the submission win at 3 minutes and 39 seconds. I just want 4 out of 10. Then match number 7 for the New Japan Pro Wrestling Television title. The champion Sack Saber Jr. defends against A.R. Fox, and the winner of this match will go to the Dominion on June 4th, defending against Jeff Cobb. So A.R. Fox caught Saber Jr. with a drop, a double draw kick combo in the corner for a two count. Then he sends Saber Jr. to the floor, hits a Superman dive, gets by and hits a more draw kick for a two count, and then Saber Jr. got a hold of Fox's arm, slams him down. CSJ starts working on the arm by nipping his wrist while in an arm bar. Fox tried to fight fighting back, but Sage, Saber Jr. on an Irish whip through the bad arm. So Saber Juku works on the arm bar, twisting AR into an arm bar, but Fox fights it off. AR caught Saber Jr. with a jump and clothesline, boots him twice for him to swing suplex for a two count. Saber Zach Saber went back to the arm, drops AR on all fours, stop him on his elbow. Then he hits a penalty kick for a two count. Then he toys with him, allow Fox to fight back, sends Saber Jr. to the floor. CJ cuts up a dog, but but he got super kick in the roast by AR. And then he had to play him DDT for two counts. Then he brought him to the top rope, but CSJ come with a cobra twist on top rope. But Fox pops up and hits the lay them all pain for a two count. I actually thought that was going to be it. Air Fox went to the rope, but CSJ rolled to the floor. Then he falls and would have dived to the back in the ring. He say, sacks him, boys, and board 50. Caught him in the European clutch for a two count. Starts working on the leg, then gets in the aura team with now Palm Death submission hole for the submission victory. At 12 minutes and 17 seconds and seconds. This was an excellent match. I give this one 7 out of 10. Sports, this is actually my second match of the night, but I'll tell them matches of the night at the end of this. And then after the match, Joshua gets in the ring, interviews him after his win. He said that he has a chance to make history as the first ever NJPW television champion. And he took it. He declares the best champion in wrestling and the most active television champion in wrestling. Speaking of TV champion, here comes the Ring of Honor television champion. Samoa Joe comes to take offense to this. He offered to fight say, Saber Jr. right now, but we hear Christian and Matt Sadow coming down the ring talking. It's their stage. My apologies. They was to say to him, Joe and Saber Jr. all held television titles, but Sadow was overdue for a shot of his own. So Sack Saber Jr. offered a tag match with a television title shot on the line for Sadow and if they win. And then everyone seems to agree, but Sadow says afterwards they will figure which television champ is better. So I imagine we'll probably get that next week. And then we go to our next match. Tag team matches. Two thirds of the six man tag team chips. Gates and Agony. Khan and Toy Leona. Le- 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 there we go. Goes against Stone Castle. Brandon Tate. Brandon Tate starts up with Khan. Gets the better one in a grappling exchange. But Khan tags in Toy Leona. Le- Le- he tags Tate and throws him across the ring. Gates and Agony throws Brandon around for a while. Until he catches Khan with a low flatliner. Khan catches him on sets him into the ropes where Toya boots him. Gates and Agony clobbers on Brandon some more until he catches. Crotches low on a splash attempt. Don Castle makes a hot take run. That's a hot take spot. Leo takes half that splashes from Castle and uh, Brandon Table. He kicks out a one. Brandon gets caught on a dive with Con with Castle with a gut buster. Gates actually hits a double face buster on Brandon Tate for the victory at nine minutes and 29 seconds. This actually wasn't a bad match. It was one five out of 10. Match number nine, some six man tag team match. We get the work horseman, JD Drake and Anthony Henry teams with Shane Taylor. Still gets Midnight Heat, Eddie Pearl, and Ricky Gibson to the shaft. Henry catches Pearl with a kick to the midsection. G. Dree takes in, flattens Pearl with a senta and a fader bomb. Shaft, shaft tags in and runs well by Shane Taylor. Draws with a lariat, workhorse, and takes a Midnight Heat. And Taylor hits the package pile jar on shaft for the quick win at a minute 51. 
I give this one four out of ten. Do go backstage. Dasha is with the Righteous. Stu Grayson, just don't know why they've been watching him lately. Righteous did well. The Dark Order brought him back. They were holding him back. Dark Order dragged him away, but Grayson decided to give them a chance, to, one chance to impress them. Then we go to our semi main event match number 10. The returning Mercedes Martinez goes with Ashley Dean Boyce. Martinez can go to have Ashley early on until she caught her with a really form, then hits the three Migos for a two count. Martinez clubbers on Ashley until Ashley avoids a corner charge, then fights back to she walked in West Blind Bus for a two count. She carries a fisherman suplex into a rope for a two count. Ashley throw a bunch of strikes at Martinez, but and it caught with a form in the ropes, then followed with a burning hammer for a two count. Martinez catcher with a curve stomp and then followed with a brass city sleeper for the submission win at six minutes and 24 seconds. I get this one six out of ten. And then maybe even a tag team fight without honor match. The Kingdom might. Mike Bennett and Matt Taven goes Ash and Dre and Darius Martin. So Kingdom blocks and Dre on the ramp, but Darius Martin drops him from behind and gets smashed started. Then we get the weapons coming up quickly with Mike Bennett catching a double drop kick in the chair with the face. Matt Taven took a chop the hole into the chair with Mar Martin launch off Taven's back to drop kick Bennett. And Dre and Martin, Darius clobbers on table weapons as he's trapped. A garbage came up. Maria it gets himself alone. Taven hit a drop kick a wire into their faces. Darius gets on the apron. Maria low blows him. A little bit to hit Darius with a chair. Bennett hits Andre with a spine buster on top of trash can. And then Taven hits the just a tip to Marn on the ladder. And, and then the Kingdom brings out uh, Taven to do more damage. Try to go for a doomsday device to the floor. But Darius moves out of the way. That leads Taven take out Bennett. Andre hits a, a ripping and press moonsault to the Kingdom on the floor. The back inside of the ring. We get a train offense. I like Dante Mar uh, Darius Marn standing. And then Taven took down Marvin with a chair to the back. Hits Hail Mary on top of chairs for a two count. And Dre fights out the pro time back by hitting a bulldog on Matt Taven. Then he puts him on the table and hits a springboard 50 splash for the table. Then he suplexes him for another table. Goes for the cover, Bennett broke it up. Bennett and Andre start trading, trading strikes. Leading to Bennett hitting a spear and Death Valley drive for another table. Martin fights his way up, but Taven drops him with the purple thunder for a two count. And then Andre and Martin got sent to the floor. Murray hits more with a pipe, held him up for Charles. Bennett went for the rebound form, but Darius moves out of the way next. And Maria uh, gets hit with the shot. And then Darius in action and drive far up. They drop Taven on the chair. They hit Bennett with the Doomsday device off the ladder for the victory at 15 minutes and 9 seconds. Longest match of the show, but I actually enjoyed this. I just won 7 out of 10. And then after the match, they came off to a handshake. And then both Andre and Martin accept it. To close out this week's edition of Ring of Honor, I actually enjoyed this episode. I kind of wish we didn't need 11 matches, honestly. But my three matches were Ray Fans for Grand K Loco, the television title, and the fight without honor match. Those are the three I recommend checking out. If I had to pick another one, I say Mercedes for Ashley Boyce and Will Nigga for Smanny Rakowski. But we had nothing announced yet. But that is the Ring of Honor stuff, guys. I'm your host, Ian Black. Have a good weekend and stay safe. Thanks for listening to the WWE Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss a show. Or head to WWEPodcast.com. And for all of these shows ad-free, head over to Patreon.com slash WWEPodcast. Until then, we'll see you next time.